This time, like, and in this video, we are looking at the royal government under Mary the First. So, first of all, it's useful to look at the situation in England in 1553. Now, Mary's succession was treated favourably by the English population, and this was either because English people supported the legitimate succession or because they wanted a reversion to Catholicism. However, Mary's popularity in England did obscure many of the issues within the country. Now, firstly, there was many religious problems. So England did have fundamental religious divisions, and Mary was a staunch Catholic in a country with substantial Protestant minorities. And Mary also wanted to implement religious change too quickly, which would have antagonised the Protestant population. Mary had also not been raised to rule, and that meant that she had little political instinct to help her cope with the political challenges. Her loyal and trustworthy supporters also had little experience within government, and this meant that she would have to rely on those who had served Edward VI and were implicated in the introduction of religious reform. So Mary appointed 50 councillors in her brief reign, and many believe that this led to many factional rivalries and an inefficient government. However, the working council board, which was where the real work got done, was much smaller and it was dominated by the experienced members in council. Mary also had other trusted groups of advisers who were not in the privy chamber, such as Cardinal Pole. But Mary's new councillors included people such as Bishop Stephen Gardiner, and Stephen Gardiner had been Henry VIII's secretary before being imprisoned under Edward VI for his religious conservatism, and he was returned to favour under Mary I, where he was restored to Winchester, and he was appointed Lord Chancellor. Other churchmen also gained their position under Mary I, after they had lost influence under Edward VI. Some of the more conservative councillors who had served under Edward were also reappointed, such as Lord Paget. However, Mary was discontent with her government, as she never fully trusted her key councillors. So, for example, she lost trust of Paget for his opposition to her religious programme, and she never fully trusted Gardner because he hadn't supported Mary's mother, Catherine of Aragon, and this was in the time when Henry VIII wanted a divorce with Catherine of Aragon. However, after Gardiner's death in 1555, he did leave a major hole within government, especially as Cardinal Pole was unwilling to participate in secular issues, so that means issues that were not religious. This meant that Mary was forced to rely on advice from two foreigners, and these foreigners were her husband, Philip of Spain, and Simon Renard, who was the ambassador of her cousin and father-in-law, Charles V. Finally, we just need to look at Mary's relationship with Parliament, because Mary's relationship with Parliament was based upon cautious cooperation, and a substantial minority of MPs, which was around 80, did oppose the reversal of Edward's religious legislation, and there were other instances where Parliament opposed the Crown's policies. One of these was the, um, the marriage, the Spanish marriage, which we'll talk about next video, and there was also concerns for things like property rights, so this meant that ex-monastic land was not returned to the church. A bill in 1555 was also defeated, which wanted to allow the seizure of property of Protestant exiles, and Mary also quarrelled with Parliament over the issue of the succession. So that is the royal government under Mary, although it was a brief reign, it was extremely important and many different things did get done. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.